Welcome to the Big Bear Homestead, and today we're saving squash seeds. Your first step in saving seeds is letting that particular fruit ripen all of the way. So, here are a few ways to tell if your squash is ready. First, just simply knock on it. If you get a good solid sound, you're pretty much good to go. Second, you can scratch it. If it's hard, kind of woody, then it's good. Third, if it falls right off or comes off with a gentle tug, you're good to go. So now let's go inside to see what's next. Okay, so now that we're back from the garden, we've picked the squash, we've come inside, and now we're gonna get ready to get to the real meat of the situation here. First thing you're gonna do, you're gonna need a knife, cutting board, just so you don't make a mess on your counter, um, and obviously the squash. Uh, you're gonna cut it down the middle, and be careful not to cut your fingers off like I look like I'm about to. Now these are going to be tough to cut because remember when we checked the skin before, they're kind of tough to the touch. So just be careful when you're cutting through the squash. And these guys are pretty big too, so it might take you more than one pass to get through them. Alright, so now you have it open and you'll see the seeds all down through the middle. And all you want to do is take a spoon and kind of scoop the meat out and then go ahead and just put them into the bowl of water. Kind of like a pumpkin. When you're taking the seeds out of a pumpkin, you gotta take them out of the meat. All right. This one's a little stubborn. I think he got a little too tough. We'll get all of those seeds out and then we'll rinse out. The reason why you put them in the water is because you want to get all of this meat off of the seeds, rinse off any extra gunk residue or anything like that that's on them before we go ahead and save them. So we'll just put these all into the bowl and then in a few minutes we'll rinse them out, separate them from the meat and they'll be ready to dry. Okay, so the next step is now that we've got the seeds in the bowl, um, we're gonna kind of pull them gently away from the meat. Um, and once we've got them pulled away from the meat, we'll go ahead and drain them out through a colander so that we can get just the seeds and leave the meat behind. Okay, so the next step is to actually get the seeds rinsed off and put onto a paper towel. Um, I've pulled away most of the meat away from the seeds, but there's still a little bit left in the water. Most people will actually just let these seeds sit in a bowl and just let them sit in the water, and the meat will just kind of dissolve into the water, and eventually you'll just have mostly the seeds. Um, but down here where we live, we have a pretty bad fruit fly problem, um, and with us going back and forth in and out the doors, um, I don't want to leave these out for too long. Um, so basically what I did, I looked around the, um, our house and into the kitchen and most of our colanders don't actually have a wide enough opening for the little pieces that I have left to pass through. So I found a slotted spoon um, and this actually works pretty well. I just scooped them up out of the water and just give it a tiny little shake. And then that will give me some of the meat in there to be able to pick it out and just kind of throw it off to the side. And then that way I've got mostly just seed. You can see there's just a very little bit of meat left that I can pull away with my fingers. Okay, so now that we've got the meat rinsed off of the seeds, um, I've laid down some paper towel and just kind of let them dry on there a little bit. Um, I did end up using my colander to kind of get the last little bit going. So I'm just going to kind of get these seeds, just put them on the paper towel, let that last little bit of moisture soak away off of the seeds. 
Okay, so now once they've soaked on the paper towel, these are still soaking. I have some over here that have been sitting for a little while. Um, they're ready to go. So what I do is just place them on a baking sheet to just let them dry out. Um, you could probably just throw these on here and if they touch, they touch, no big deal. But I want to make sure that they are all good seeds. Um, the ones that are cracked or I've cut into when I was cutting the squash, we'll take those and put them off to the side with the meat and the leftover parts of the squash and we'll give all of those to the chickens um, for deworming because all of your squash seeds and stuff are good for deworming, a natural dewormer for your chickens and basically all your animals, but we definitely throw them to the chickens because we have a whole lot more of them than we have of everybody else. Okay, so the final step, we put our um, seeds out on a baking tray um, to just let them lay flat and dry. Um, and it's also easier if you've missed any um, half seeds or any meat, you can kind of pull those off. You can see them better because they're all laying flat. And then what we do is we take these baking sheets and we have a drying rack that we put them on that's in a cool place where there's not a lot of sun. And we take those and let them dry for about two weeks. And then once they're nice, good, and dry, then you can take them and store them whichever way you want. Some people put them in envelopes and that way they can write down what, you know, which one you have. Like this is straight neck, yellow squash. So we'll mark um, whatever we put them in, we'll mark it with. Some of our smaller seeds, we have, um, we use essential oils and they're in amber glass bottles. So we'll take them and put them in those after we've obviously thoroughly cleaned those out. We can store the seeds in there so the sunlight doesn't get into them. With these, what we'll probably do is some old spice cans or spice jars that you get, the old tins. Um, we can put them in there and then label them so that we know which one when we're ready to plant next year. Well, thanks for coming by. Thanks for checking out our video. Um, give us, go ahead and check us out on Facebook. You can give us the like. Check us out also on um, Twitter and also at our website. It's www.bigbearhomestead.com. And obviously, you found us on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. And as always, have a nice day. I'll come back now. You hear?